were the geeks? <laughs> I thought that your ex-wife left you because you no longer had any money. And then in the panel you said that you left her. So, uh, what, what, what is it? Because she's coming, she's back in the next episode, is that? Is it the next episode? The next episode or two. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, my character left his wife because he was going to get her killed if he hung around. Uh, there, that once the power goes out, uh, very quickly, she is injured and uh, ill and he can't help her. Uh, and then they're almost killed by uh, uh, ruffians. And, uh, and uh, so he makes the selfless slash selfish decision to just make himself scarce. And then it haunts him for 15 minutes. Thank you. Hey guys, how are you? How many Hi. selfish slash selfless decisions are ahead for you? Wow. <laughs> I don't think selfless ever comes into uh, any, any conversation that involves Monroe. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what the reference point was for, for the for the remark. I'm not but, either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, you're just waffling. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of it, but I think that um, uh, I think Monroe is so enamoured with his own grief, own own um, guilt, own self-loathing, own need for love, that there is nothing but selfishness, and that kind of that. Um, Manifests in, in, in usually an outward expression of rage and and all the all the all the good stuff. Is he irredeemable in your eyes? This is a question that keeps coming up, and it's and it's really interesting. It's like uh, uh, redemption is 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 a tricky concept because is he redeemable through action? Maybe, but is he redeemable within himself? Probably not. But he's so horribly broken. So I mean, he can be led. Um, to that water, but he's not necessarily going to drink it. How much power does he want? When, when they get the power back, does he think he needs to be president of the United States, or does, is he finally president of the Monroe? No, well, this is the thing, that he's got a void in him that can't be that can't be filled with all the power in the world, so I don't think he knows where the buck stops, Like where, where, and, and that's the danger. Um, he was a man that probably never wanted it in the first place, and now that is the only thing that he perceives as um, a means to stop the inner turmoil is to, he's trying to gain control over something that he can't control. So. You, uh, your character is basically kind of the every man, like everybody kind of sees the world kind of through your eyes, I guess. Yeah. So how did you kind of approach the character when you become, as the experiences happen, you become kind of harder and, and stronger, I guess. Yeah. So how, how did that, how did you play that? Uh, well, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, that in the first half of the season, uh, whatever involvement uh, Aaron allows himself to have in this adventure is really ultimately so that he can gather everybody together and take them back home and put things back the way they were. And then when that is uh, no longer an option and he's just left hanging there in the wind with everybody else, then he has to find a way to change the direction, change the reason that he's out there in the first place. And it becomes about finding out what happened, what caused all of this nonsense and how to how, how to fix it. So I think more the strength of, I was actually speaking a little more of the strength of Aaron, like, especially like the episode where they're, they're taken prisoner and mm -hmm. he has to stand up to these bullies. Mm -hmm. it, it was really impressive. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it's it's been, there are episodes coming up where I, I get to do actual stunts <laughs> and actually fight back. <laughs> Um, and that's, uh, I think, a great thing for the character, and it's a really fun thing to do as well. And, and as far as, you know, how, how you would go about preparing to do that, it hasn't really been an issue of that because it's made a, a great deal of emotional and logical sense for those things to happen. And so it's been, it's been a, a fairly easy progression into that. For, for either of you, did the producers have to give you at any point any information about your characters ahead of time, ahead of the reveal? <laughs> Just they so probably had to, but they didn't. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my face is twitching so much. They don't, uh, I, if they have to, they are in, in violation of that. Uh, and, and I think that that is a, a, a question of, of, of circumstance, uh, largely, because I think that the show is, is so big and it's so, so ambitious in its reach that, you know, the, the information is, is all being 
crammed into a funnel and made into a show. Uh, and and th there's not a lot of lead time uh, for these things. So it's uh, what, where that might appear frustrating or strange uh, uh, to, to deal with, it's actually sort of become a strength because it just, your character wouldn't know. Why should you? You have to trust that whatever's coming down the pipe for you is not going to be uh, uh, you in any yeah, way. Not, yeah, not not create any cognitive dissonance, and, and yeah. you'll be able to to do it. But no, we don't get told anything. Anything. <laughs> so anything. There was a clip that they showed. They showed that showed you at a computer, and it sort of looked like it might have had something to do with the capsule. Can you talk about? Wow, you got all of that from that. <laughs> You sure that's the only place you got it? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly the, the capsule. Oh, the capsule. The capsule. Oh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a sharp eye. Yeah, no, that is exactly uh, what is coming up. That capsule uh, is not a a one trick pony uh, in terms of of the sort of mythology and gadgetry of the show. It's it's a it's a pretty remarkable little thing, uh, and uh, yeah, that's exactly what. Uh, uh, and 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 it has something to do with Rachel being forced to finally tell Aaron what's going on or what she knows about what's going on, and tell and makes forces him to realize that he may have some actual involvement in the blackout itself. Are we going to be? I'm sorry. Last quick. Last quick. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Are we going to find out um, more about Monroe's backstory? Because I have to say, the more that we find out about Monroe from history, has made the character a lot more compelling. Yeah, I, I think it's been a real blessing to, to for everyone. When when you get a, a story, uh, and uh, any part of the episode where you get a backstory, you, you've got something to tether yourself to. We do, um, and and. There will be more of that Miles Monroe history and the reasons why they are who they are and they've become the people that they've become. Um, and that'll be, uh, certainly in, um, I think episode 15 we start to explore a little bit more than that. There's, um, uh, we, I think in the panel that they spoke about it earlier, there was, there was a, a person from our childhood which um, we're both uh, entwined with and, and, and there's consequences that come from, you know, the, our, meeting and, and so on but um yeah th there will be quite a few little elements of backstory that start to creep in does he feel invincible because there's a scene where we see him in the helicopter so he's actually putting his life on the line by going out into battle maybe? yeah well that's 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 the definition of ins insanity isn't it it's kind of like uh i think that there is well i don't think he feels that he's invincible i just think he has nothing to lose when he got nothing he got nothing to lose and i think like monroe has everything but he also has absolutely nothing um, and so, you know, I don't think that he minds putting himself in harm's way because there is a, 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 an element of him that, that has a bit of a death wish on the way.